We're joined right now on the Mercedes-Benz Van Phones line by seven-time Pro Bowl pick, member of the NFL's All-2000s team. He's a Super Bowl champ, one of our favorites, NFL legend Dwight Freeney is with us. Dwight, thank you very much uh, for joining the show. Where where do we find you on this uh, this fine day? Well, I'm in West Palm Beach, Florida, trying to dodge a hurricane. Whoa. So, yeah, hopefully it goes down to a tropical storm, so we don't have to deal with that. But, yeah, yeah, I've been dodging a few hurricanes. So I love it down here. Well, I will, I'll start then by saying, uh, if you see a hurricane coming, Dwight, feel free to hang up. This is a very important interview to us, <laughs> but for you and your safety, we don't want to lose you. Uh, for the next few minutes here on this show. Let me get your thoughts uh, up in Indianapolis. Franchise that you know really well. You certainly know Jim Ursay. They fire Frank Reich. They make to the outside an extraordinary hire in uh, Jeff Saturday to be the interim head coach. What, what has been your reaction to everything that's been happening in your former NFL home? I think it's similar to most people where, you know, you're just surprised. You're like, you know, when someone called me and told me, you know, Frank got fired, I was like, man, that's tough because Frank's a great guy and he's, I think he's a really good coach. Um, I think he had just a whole bunch of bad luck and situation this year where it was out of his control. You know, you have Jonathan Taylor that goes down in injuries in the first few weeks. You know, that's, you know, your horse. Right, and then your backup running back, Naeem Hines, gets hurt with a concussion. He's gone for three or four weeks. So then, you know, you have an offensive line who's just in shambles. <laughs> so, so your quarterback, no matter what kind of quarterback you got back there, you, they're going to get attacked and, and rushed and blitzed, and and the ball is going to be coming out all different types of ways. So, you know, it was a tough situation. I think you know Frank managed it as, as well as he could. Um, during the, based on the circumstances. So when I heard he got fired, I was like, oh, man, that's rough. You know, I wonder who they're going to you know, promote you know, in-house. And then I heard it was Jeff. And I said, hold on a second, who? Because I, I was just with Jeff you know, um, at the Ring of Honor for Tariq Glenn. And we were talking a little football. We were talking about you know, scheme things and whatever. And you know, there wasn't even a mention of any type of inkling of wanting to be a head coach or anything, right? And I think he had actually mentioned it in his press conference that he was surprised, all right? So, you know, I, it's going to be a real tough situation he's walking into, you know? There's a reason why you just promote somebody within the organization just to go up and, you know, salvage what you can, salvage for the year. Uh, because you know you know what to do, you know how it's been working, you know the play calls and and the things that you've worked on from mini camp, training camp, um, all of the things that have progressed to this point, you kind of know it. So you're not kind of like you know going in there fresh and and trying to recreate the wheel. Now I don't think that Jeff is going to do that. I think Jeff. He's going to obviously, you know, he's a smart guy. He's a great guy. He's, you know, I'm happy for him, you know, because obviously he's had aspirations of wanting to be a head coach, even though it's a surprise to me. I never knew he wanted to be one. And so therefore he gets, you know, a great situation in a sense where you don't really have to interview for anything. You just go out and just do it. Um, but that being said, if you look too bad, maybe they, people don't look at him and saying, ah, you know, he did such a terrible job, but you know, I guess, like he said, right? He has nothing to lose in this situation. Um, we'll see. But I was surprised, man. I was definitely surprised. So you go from the, the surprise of Frank Reich being fired to the surprise of your former teammate Jeff Saturday being plucked from a TV analyst job and a former high school coaching job to be the head coach. How quickly then does your brain turn toward why didn't Jim Irsay call me, Dwight Freeney, to be the interim head coach? <laughs> no, I, I, would, I would have definitely hung up on that. <laughs> I like, I don't like, oh, something's wrong with my phone, Jim. Let me, let me uh, check the reception here. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I'll be honest with you. Obviously, there's been some type of conversation at some point. You know, I think, you know, Jeff is a great leader. You know, he, he, he had been when he was playing for us, you know, back in the day. And obviously, you know, 
they saw something in him to where as though this would be his opportunity to be the, the guy forever or for as long as they, they would like. Now, this isn't – the one thing I'm going to say is, look, this is a eight-week or whatever, two-month, you know, uh, I guess – I don't, even, I don't even want to call it like audition because you're walking into a middle of a season and it's kind of like it's a real – you can't really be judged too harshly on whatever happens here, you know. So that's where I think the upside is. Um, but, it's, you know, it's not a situation where they may not – they may find another head coach after two months, you know. They may say, hey, Jeff, thank you for just holding down the ship for two months. And now we're going to go through an interview process and bring some other guys in. I just don't know what's going to happen because this has never happened before. You know, I've never seen anything like this. I don't know if you guys ever seen anything like this. So it's one of those things where, you know, we all have our hands in the air. Like, all right, well, let me know what's going to happen. What about as a player, Dwight? And I know you didn't experience a ton of coaching changes during your, your NFL career. But if you're in that locker room and – for one thing, I mean, you've already gone through Matt Ryan gets benched, which from all local reports was a shock to a lot of players in that locker room. The following week, the offensive coordinator gets fired. Then the head coach gets fired. And now you're bringing in someone who, listen, like people, I think, probably know loosely. A lot of guys might have heard Jeff Saturday's name, but a lot of the players in the league on that team are 21, 22 years old. They don't remember watching Jeff Saturday. They know him as a guy who showed up occasionally for the, the Ring of Honor celebration if he's walking in front of you as great of a guy as smart of a guy as he is what's the the player's reaction when he gets up there for the first time in a team meeting this morning well you know they'll probably be just like how we are (laughs) they're gonna be completely shocked that this is happening you know indianapolis has been a pretty stable place in a sense you know it's always been you know, Frank, he's been there for four years, right? And this is, I think, he's going into his fifth year. So they were used to, you know, how he controlled the meeting and his pulse. Um, and I'm, and he was a liked guy. He wasn't, you know, there's some coaches where you just can't wait for him to get fired. Mm-hmm. You know, ah, thank God this guy's gone, you know. Party, you know, let's have a party now. You know, that wasn't Frank. Frank was beloved. Everyone loved him. Um, and he's just that type of guy. So you feel really bad when he's gone. And then Jeff, he's a great stand-up guy too, but I think he also understands that. He was a player. He understands what those players are thinking. Like, what's going to happen next? You know, you know, are you going to completely change things? And I don't think he will because that would make no sense. You don't have time to, to do a whole 180 on your scheme and what you're going to play call and your play calls and, and, and who's going to do this, who's going to do that. You kind of have to kind of like just manage it all, you know, and then get those motivational speeches or whatever, get those guys' minds right, or maybe help with the offensive line. You know, that's the problem with the team right now, quite frankly. The defense has done everything they could possibly do based on the circumstances of all these turnovers and, and sudden changes and, and what's going on. It's the offensive line who truth be told has failed this team. Um, and so maybe he's there to, I don't know, fix that. I don't know. Well, it just Saturday revealed today that Jim Irsay called him during the game on Sunday, Dwight, not after called him during the game saying what the H is wrong with the, the offensive line and 24 hours later, Jeff Saturday, not even 24 hours later, uh, was the the head coach of the team. I think that a lot of people over the past several weeks, maybe casual NFL fans, people who have, who are fans of other teams, have kind of been uh, getting immersed in the Jim Ursay experience between his comments about Daniel Snyder, uh, you know, potentially being removed as owner of the Commanders, to now the press conference introducing Jeff Saturday and the unique thought process that went into it. I mean, you spent a a decent amount of time around Jim through the years. Like, how, how would you how would you describe Jim Ursay to someone who has never met him? <laughs> Jim is something else. Jim is Jim is a great guy, first of all. All right, and he's just one of those guys. He's just gonna do what he feels. Whatever he feels, whatever his gut is telling him, that's what he's going to go by. Um, so, I mean, that's been my experience with him. You know, he's just, you know, and usually his compass, you know, is in, in the right place. 
You know, not everybody makes all the right decisions. You know, no one's perfect. Jim is not perfect. He's going to make bad decisions, bad hires, like every other owner out there. You know, but this is his his ship and his team, and he's going to decide to do it the way he wants to do it. And he follows it by his gut. And, and he doesn't, you know, he's not going to, like, listen. You know, he may listen to people. I don't know exactly, you know, I'm not in his inner circle, so I don't know if he had any influence in making this uh, decision. But, you know, just knowing Jim, you know, he's a guy that, you know, you have to stay on your toes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's just because, but, but he, you know, he's not going to do anything crazy, but he's just going to, you know, do things maybe a little, you know, uh, to the left or right or whatever, however you want to look at it, that, you know, it's just based on his gut. So fanning out, Dwight, and I'm sure you still you still watch the league at this point. Um, as, as you look around, obviously the, we've had a lot of close games this season. It's also been a lot of low-scoring games. There's a lot of offenses we're accustomed to seeing play well and be high-powered that are very much not, that are struggling. In your mind, when you're just watching it as one of the, the best players of your generation, do you see – Bad offense or good defense in the league right now? Um, you know, it's 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 a mixture of, of both. I think I think because of so much of rule changes and um, you know, from you know, a defensive perspective, it, it becomes a really hard and I, and obviously I'm a little biased on this, but you know, the way that they protect the quarterback, um, it's turned into a little bit of a different game, all right? Now, you know, this game has done everything for me, and I love this game. Um, but, you know, sometimes when you, I don't know, protect the quarterback the way that they, the way that they do, okay, um, it makes everyone else feel like they're pawns, like they don't really matter, you know, like this defensive guy who has to make a play. He's making a play not only for himself, but his team and his family. You know, he has to, you know, put food on the table, whatever his aspirations are, you know, in his career. And if he's getting penalized for doing his job, right, um, which when I say that, it takes people who have done um, or played the position of defensive line or what have you to understand how impossible some of these situations that they're getting flagged for, you know, I get it. We want to protect the quarterback position in all positions. Right. But there's a level of realistic expectations, you know, that have to be looked at this and intent has to be looked into this and replays need to be looked in, you know, to be implemented um, potentially because a lot of these, roughing the passer situations are costing, you know, team games. All right. So when you have a quarterback who can sit back there and basically drink a little martini and knows that no one's going to really hit him and he's going to go and he can go ahead and do the things that he does in the pocket, it changes um, the aggression and different things defensively, which equate to more points. And, and different things there, which obviously I, I think that's where the league and the NFL would prefer because fans love the 59-57 game, you know, with a million touchdowns, you know. But for me, I see that and I get nauseous and I want to throw up. <laughs> it's like, where's the defense? Um, so I do believe that, you know, the game, you know, still has some tweaking to do. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that some of these rule changes have changed certain things to where those points are being scored um, a lot easier from an offensive perspective. Um, and defense is just a little bit harder to uh, do now because you just don't know what you can do. <laughs> so, so last question for you along those lines, Dwight. I looked it up. The last game you played was uh, New Year's Eve 2017. So it's been... Close to five years uh, since you last suited up in the NFL. Let's say, you know, since 
<laughs> Strange things are happening. Let's say Jim Irsay calls you up this week and says, Dwight, I know you would have you would have hung up on me if I offered you the head coaching job, but boy, this pass rush is really struggling here. He brings you back for eight games right now. You're suiting up. Not let's let's say you know that have to be seventy snaps a game, but just you know situationally, you're playing third downs or something. Eight games the rest of the season, Dwight. How many sacks do you have for the Colts? How many sacks do I have? <laughs> well. Based on these rules, not many. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting there, but they're getting overturned is what you're saying. Yeah, all, all a thousand percent. I'm going to get there, all right? I'm going to get there, and I might get a, a, a another – I might make a few plays. You know, one of the plays is going to be called a hamstring, and another play is going to be called a groin. But <laughs> within, within those plays, I'm going to get some sacks. And they may take them away, all right? But I'm not laying down a quarterback gently. I just don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Dwight, awesome stuff. Please stay safe and please uh, come back to the show soon. There's no problem. You guys take care of yourself. NFL legend yeah. Dwight Freeney, who some would argue wisely would have hung up on Jim Irsay if he was offered that uh, <laughs> that interim head coaching job. That was a, that was a fantastic Bananas. answer. I'm also already thinking about which quarterbacks would have what drink while standing in the pocket. You put martinis on the lot of them. Not everybody's a martini <laughs> drinker, martini. but I, there's definitely a few. A How many drinkers. NFL quarterbacks are drinking martinis? I can't think Just of Just a those. big glass of vodka before you go out Jeez. there to, uh, to practice. Probably not a great plan. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.